Hello, this is Dennis Jers. I'm teaching a course on video game culture and theory at Seton Hill University. And right now I'm going to give a very brief introduction to Scratch. Scratch is a free programming tool created by MIT. It's designed to introduce elementary school kids to the basics of computer programming. These colorful blocks are all bits and pieces of programming code. The really absolutely cool thing about it is that these puzzle pieces only fit together in a certain way. If you were coding in a traditional programming environment, if you put together things that don't work, you get an error message. If you don't put these blocks together in the right way in Scratch, you don't actually see an error message. The blocks just bounce off each other. They don't fit. So you can never really run a program that has an error in it. It's a simplified programming language. It doesn't let you do a, um, all the things that Flash or C++ or something like that would allow you to do. But it does introduce all the basic concepts. This is the, the default environment. Uh, I'm just going to uh, I'm going to delete this guy, the, um, the default character, because I'm going to start with my own to show you something. Uh, clicking here gets you a new sprite. The visible elements of a Scratch um, program are called Sprite. It's not unique to Scratch. That's what it's called in business. Um, let's make a... Well, let's make it even smaller than that. I'll undo. Make a small thing that we will call... Cattle. And all I have to do to position it is to move it that way. And I'm going to add a control that says um, when clicked. I'm going to add a loop that says forever. And this little arrow here reminds you that it's going to do all this stuff in here. Uh, just for starters, I'll show you what this does. Now, it's pretty obvious what happens when this green arrow is clicked. Forever move this. 10 steps. There you go. So we just made our first Scratch program. Uh, it's kid-friendly because as you can see this piece actually never it, it stops when it hits the edge of the screen. So you can just find it and grab it and drag it black, back in place. Also what's really neat about Scratch is, see this right here? It says move 10 steps. I can click it and see exactly what happens. All the components of Scratch are sort of live. I can even run this program and fiddle with the, the programming elements while the program is running and see what happens. It's really it's a great tool that encourages um, creative play. And creative play is also learning. Let's add the commands that allow this paddle to move left and right when I touch keys. It makes so much sense when you see it happen. Let's take key, and I'm going to ask what happens when I push the right arrow. So we'll do this. If right arrow is pressed, go to motion. That will change x by 10. If sensing key, and by the way, see, if I try to put if move 10 steps, it makes no sense from a logical perspective. It won't fit. And if I try to stick key space pressed or key, well, let's make that left arrow, which is what I really want, key left arrow pressed, if I try to stick that somewhere that doesn't make sense, it just won't fit. Anyway, so that's the beautiful thing about this. Okay, so then I will change so I will change x by negative 10.
if I very carefully manipulate my mouse pointer, I can get it so that it is at 0, 0, which is the center of the screen. Horizontally, the x-axis. Vertically, I'm moving the y-axis. Higher y values on the screen are higher numbers. If I go below the origin, it's negative. To the right, x is positive. To the left, x is negative. Okay. I'll click the green arrow to run it. And right, left, there we go. Okay, so I've made a paddle. Let's now create a ball. I'm going to create a new sprite. And I do want to make this very small. Eh, it doesn't really look circle-y enough. So if I hold down the Shift button, it'll try to, to um, constrain that image to the shape of a square. That's pretty good. Now, this, um, this is a very simple paint tool um, editor, but you can do some surprisingly interesting effects. Let's get the fill bucket, and let's put this gradient on here. And I'm just going to do a little something that, now suddenly I've turned a black circle into a marble. Look at that. Doesn't that look cool? These details over here would allow you that if, for instance, if you have a character who uh, you draw facing to the right, if you want to turn that character around, it'll flip that character. Here, well, let's, let's, um, this one allows you to rotate it. You can watch that highlight. I don't really want my marble to work like this. See, I don't want that highlight to move. Neither do I want the highlight to jump from left to right as I point my marble in different directions. So I'm going to click this Don't Rotate button. Uh, I will still be able to change the direction that my sprite is facing, but the um, image will not change. And uh, that's the kind of display I want for the kind of motion that my ball is going to get. So um, let us go to, um, I've clicked on the paddle. Oh, hey, let's name this guy Ball. Ball, okay. Um, all I really need to do on the paddle is this. I'm going to put most of the other interesting actions on the ball. Control. When the green arrow is clicked, which is when the program begins, I'm going to move the ball to the paddle. There we go. Now, I don't really want the ball overlapping on top of the paddle. That doesn't make sense, so I'm going to do a little trick here. I'm going to go to the paddle click on Costumes, and edit this little square. I want the center of the square set Costume Center. Right now it's logically right there. I want to put it up, put that center up higher. Yeah, that's what I want. So that now, when the paddle goes, we'll do this over here. There we go. Okay. So um, so now when this command runs under scripts, when the green flag is clicked, go to paddle, it'll sort of be hovering on top of the paddle, and, that, and that's what I want. Okay, now we need to make that ball move. So, um, we will start with When this green arrow is clicked, go to paddle, and then I'm going to wait until I click the space bar. The space bar will do the launch. So, wait until key space is pressed, and then when that happens, forever. I will move the ball 10 steps. 